Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 15. I can't believe we're already at 15. Uh, today I will be doing a demonstration for you on how to do an eyelet that has no thread running to or from it from nearby. So it means you can have an eyelet sitting in the middle of nowhere. It's a really lovely way to finish off an eyelet um, because it's so much better than poking your thread through the back, um, which we've all tried doing and never had very much success with. Uh, today the embroidered item that I am wearing is another little pendant. This is one that I made a while ago just for fun. So it's not one that comes in a kit or anything like that. Um, if you'd like it to, then I could certainly put them together. But um, I've got to find the time to write the instructions. And um, I've got other things to do, like make videos and write a book. Anyway. Um So I'm going to bring my needle in from the front so that the tail will sit on the front and then bring my needle out where I want to start my eyelet. Um, I'm going to work this eyelet in an anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction. You could just as easily go in the other direction. If you're going to start here and go clockwise, then I would suggest having your tail sitting down here. Um, you can put a knot in the tail if you want to, but I don't find that it's actually uh, there's any need to do that. So my eyelet is going to be over four by four thread. So if this is my corner, I go over two to the center and take it through. Now I'm going to come out one thread to the left of that and pull it through. When I'm tightening my eyelet, what I want to do is pull away from the center. That's what opens out the eyelet so that it gets bigger back into the center again, come out the next hole around and again I'm going to pull away from the center. So keep going round, pulling away from the center each time to open up your eyelets. So many times I see people to and do eyelets and all they have is this tiny pin prick of a hole in the center and I think what is even the point in doing that because um, it, if it's meant to be a hole, so make it a hole. And as you can see here, I'm not pulling a great deal and I'm getting a very nice open hole. So don't be afraid to pull. That's our next corner. So keep going around. I'm also sewing this with my left hand. There is no reason why you could not do this with your right hand instead. Okay, so when we get towards the end, the last three stitches, we want to do them slightly differently. So this will be one, two, three, yep, yeah, okay. So this is my third last stitch. So what I'm gonna do is leave that sitting up nice and large. Then I'm gonna go back into the center again. When you do this, just make sure that you don't snag a thread of a previous stitch. It's really easy to do that. Um, it's a bit harder when you're using a tapestry needle to snag the thread, but it can still be done. So I'm bringing my needle out in the corner, which is the same place as where I started. And then I'm going to insert it into those three threads and tighten them down. So tighten it as tight as you can, then pull it through so that you have just the doubled thread. So where the two ends are in the thread, in the stitches, then tighten it again, then pull it through so you've just got the single thread, tighten it one more time, and then you can pull it home. Now at this point, I need to actually go and get my scissors. So I will do that. Okay, I'm back and I have my scissors. Now what I can do here is just trim that off on the front and I can also get rid of my tail from the beginning that can go as well and there you have an eyelet that sits in the middle of the fabric there's no thread leading to it no thread leading away from it and it means that you can have eyelets sitting in the middle of your fabric and they don't need to be adjacent to anything. It's a beautiful finish. You can do this on a counted eyelet. You don't have to do it in a counted eyelet. You can also do it on um, surface stitchery eyelets as well. Um, it's just a fantastic way of finishing off. Now, some people ask me, why is it that you do it on the front? Why don't you do it on the back? Why don't you have that thread on the back? Um, and 
The reason why is because if it looks good on the front, it's going to look good on the back. And I don't actually care what the back looks like. It's the front that I care about. So I could turn it over and do it from the back, but then I wouldn't know what the front looked like. So if I've already done it on the front, I know the front looks good. And that is so much easier doing it this way than getting our needle and poking it through on the back, which we've all tried to do before and we've never had much success with. So this is a great way to finish off. So I hope you found that demonstration really interesting and useful. Um, maybe there's some things that you can already think of that you could utilise that technique for. Uh, so often we think that um, eyelets need to be right next to something that we can anchor the thread into, but they don't, as you can see. Uh, one of the other really useful things about that sort of eyelet is that you don't get the last stitch showing as the last stitch. So you know how when you do an eyelet and the last stitch comes in and it's just not got the same tension as the rest of them, well this stops that from happening um, and it means that it's no longer a problem. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found it useful and interesting and I hope your stitching is going well. I've started stitching my new project that I was talking about, I think, the other day and I'm loving it. It's so much fun. Uh, you will get to see it eventually. It will be in the next book. Thanks very much for spending this time with me. I hope you're doing well. Bye.